people uncomfortable with this is sometimes complex fractions pop up. I'll show you what I mean. What I mean. Um, first of all, I'm going to start the same way I've, that I've been. The uh, coefficients need to become exponents. So let me go ahead and make those my exponents. Plus log x plus 5 to the third minus log of 2x plus 3 to the seven. And then there's no coefficient on that, so that's just going to stay log 3x. Okay? Start there. That's where I always start. And then, you know, you have a difference and a difference. You have a bunch of stuff going on, but you, two at a time, from left to right. PEMDAS, right? Order of operations says you do addition and subtraction from left to right. So two at a time, one at a time. You know, one set at a time. So a sum, right, of two separate logs becomes a product of those two expressions with the single log of the same base, right? So I became a product. And I'm just going to bring the rest of it down. Minus log of three <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that was just the product rule. Now, boom, here's the next one. I have a difference of separate logs. And a difference becomes a single log of a quotient. This is my numerator, x minus 2 squared times x plus 5 to the third. And this is my denominator, 2x plus 3 to the seven. Bring the rest down minus log of 3x. So this is the part that I think makes people uncomfortable because now I have a difference of two separate logs and a difference of two separate logs becomes a quotient, but I already have a quotient. So it's a quotient and a quotient. Um, so this is a single, I'll show all my work, a single log of a quotient. This is the whole numerator x minus 2 squared times x plus 5 to the third all over 2x plus 3 to the seventh. This is the numerator, so divided by the denominator 3x. A complex fraction happens with something like this when you have a minus and a minus and you're condensing. You can't leave it like this. This is a complex fraction. You cannot leave it like this. Let me copy and paste it and bring it. I need some space. So let me take this thing and bring it to the next page. Okay? Um, it's so big. <laughs> so, all right. Um, let me focus on, you know, this in yellow. I'm going to ignore the log for a second and just focus on this and bring the log back at the end because I want to show you how to deal with complex fractions. So I have this, right, fraction. I just copied it down, my numerator, divided by, divided by my denominator. So I'm writing it as the division of two separate fractions instead of a complex fraction. This is the numerator, a fraction bar is division, divided by my denominator, which is now this fraction over one. And what do you do when you have division of separate fractions? You keep the first the same, keep it, just copying it down, keep the first, flip the second, change to multiplication, and then multiply. If something cancels, you cancel it, but nothing's going to cancel. So multiply across the top. Multiply across the bottom. 3x times 2x plus 3 to the 7. So therefore, my final logarithmic function, my final condensed logarithmic function, is log of x minus 2 to the 2nd times x plus 5 to the 3rd all over 3x times 2x plus 3 to the 7. And this is my final condensed base. Again, why is this funky when I, you know, when students see this? You got, the, you got subtraction and subtraction. And I have a double subtraction, which makes a complex fraction. Because it's division and then again division. Division and division. Complex fractions pop up. Complex fractions are not hard. Right? Because you can always convert them into the division of separate fractions. And you know how to divide fractions. You keep the first, 
flip the second, change the multiplication, and then pull it together into a single one fraction.